Luke Thomas with MMA Fighting here at the UFC 145 press conference in Atlanta, Georgia, next to the coach of the Black Slings, or one of the coach, Mike Van Arsdale. Mike, how are you doing today? Doing really good. All right, Mike, so talk to me about this. John Jones is something at the top of the presser that he thinks that there's a chance that, you know, Rashad Evans, maybe he's not in his physical prime. What did you think about that suggestion? Um, I mean, that you know, you can think anything you want to think. I mean, if that's his opinion, that's fine, you know, with me. But I think Rashad is ready for this fight and ready to win this fight. And that's the most important thing. How does the training camp at Jackson's when you were there, and now you're over at the Black Zillions, are, are there any similarities, are there any commonalities, or is it really a new organic environment there? No, the camp is run different than the camp then, and I was part of the camp, part of the coaching staff, and um, I adopted the personality, not the personality, but the philosophy of the uh, camp, and when I coached, I coached uh, with that in mind. This camp has a little bit different philosophy. Things have changed, uh, and uh, I've kind of taken uh the best of all the coaches that i've ever seen throughout my uh, wrestling fight career and i try to put them all together uh to a point where you know we can help everyone in in the room get to become the best that they can be and that's what's happening in our room right now everyone's just rising up to a different level you know would you would you agree with the characterizations that rashad evans has made you know namely that he didn't get the attention at the end of his jackson's career that he was he initially had gotten is it true that that Greg was so all over the place that guys weren't getting that sort of manicured treatment they were accustomed to. You know what, that's one problem that I'm seeing in my own little situation here. It's like a little mom and pop restaurant going big, franchising, you can't control everything. So it's a struggle for anyone. And when someone like Greg Jackson was having success, I mean, people start coming to the camp, next thing you know, he gets overwhelmed. You have to have lots of help and coaches, not just a lot of coaches, but coaches without the ego, that don't go on ego trips because they could be a cancer in your room. So you have to have coaches that are pretty down to earth, willing to work together and believe in a common goal and really work hard to uh, help the athletes achieve that goal and help the team to rise. Uh, and, and I think Greg had a lot of loyal people in there and people that were working hard, but not enough. You know, so maybe that was at one point. Maybe he's doing great right now. All right, I know your time is tight, so let's talk about the wrestling aspect of this fight. Jones had suggested that's where it's going to be won or lost. And I think some people agree with that. What is your characterization of that? Particularly, you know, talk to me about John Jones' wrestling. Uh, is he able to stop the takedown because of his domination of distance? Um, the fight, all these fights come down to uh, distance and who controls where the fight goes. So controlling where the fight goes is called wrestling. So this is a wrestling-based sport, and uh, uh, the striking is there. Uh, and, and when you're doing your striking, that's how you control the distance. So the transition between striking and wrestling will determine who wins the fight. Whoever can, whoever can perform the transition best will win. Does Rashad have a uniquely different wrestling style than Ryan Bader? Rashad's 100 times harder to wrestle than Ryan Bader in MMA. Why? Because I just said it. Whoever controls the transition... And whoever's good at that will be good in MMA. And Ryan Bader's not very good at it. I'm not saying anything bad about him, but he's working on some of the wrong things. And uh, Rashad's faster than Ryan Bader. And Rashad, when you shoot on Rashad Evans, all you feel you feel like he weighs maybe 400 pounds. It's really hard to take him down. Where Ryan Bader uh, is is not. He looks really, really strong, but he's not as strong as he looks. All right, two more questions for you. We'll let you go. Appreciate your time. Give us an injury update. I know you had a separated tendon. All right, was that what I had to separate a tendon? What do you have? What do you have going on? Up off uh, the elbow, and it rolled up like this. And the doctor cut me here, cut me there, uh, reattached it to the bone. And so you're. Oh, I gotta wear this for how long? Three weeks. Then I get a frame. And then lastly, I, I saw in the primetime video that in, when you were in the hospital, Crazy Horse Bennett was with you in the hospital room. Is he part of the Black Zillions? Is he still involved in MMA? You know, Crazy Horse came in for a couple of days and worked out with our team. We let people do that. He's, uh, he's from Florida, so he had a fight. He took a fight on short notice and came and worked out with us two days. But he's not officially part of the Black Zillions? No, but I think he uh, was hanging out with Rashad or something or wanted to come by and see if I was okay. All right, one more question I lied. I know you have to go. At the Olympic trials this weekend, a any break? Are you, are you paying attention to amateur wrestling still? I know it's a big part of your life for a long time. You think Cejudo can make the Olympic team? If he worked hard, I hope he does. <laughs> All, right. All right. Mike Van Arsdale, coach of the Black Zillions, UFC 145. Thanks for your time, Mike.